A Navy veteran dies and his nephew cremates him. The problem? That veteran does not have a nephew. Yeah, I-Team investigator Kyla McGivern following the paper trail tonight, discovering just how easy it is for someone unrelated to you to take over when you die. So, so this is your father, I mean. Yes, this is probably him around in his 50s, maybe 60. Robert Wallaconis was a Navy veteran, a retired businessman, a dog breeder. It's kind of hard to see because it, pigeons and dogs were his, his gentleness. He was a lot of things, his son Michael says. But he wasn't the best at being a father. So 30 years, I wanted to uh, tell him that I forgive him for that, you know, um, and I didn't get that. Robert died June 5th, 2018, at 71 years old. So I'd called to do a um, health and welfare check on him, and we found out he had passed several months before. Michael says he and his father had a troubled relationship, but as his daughter's college graduation approached, he reached out to his dad. We tried to call, the phone was disconnected. We thought he was just trying to get some space, which he did over the years. If he didn't want to talk to you, he wouldn't. Michael and his sister immediately drove down to their father's house in Hernando and found a death certificate naming a stranger as his nephew. We went to the uh, health records office and we saw a name on there, a Todd Smith. And I had no idea who that was and my father was an only child. The man claiming to be a nephew also ordered his cremation. I had him cremated when he wanted to be buried in Fort Anita Town Gap, Pennsylvania. I can't believe this could happen to someone. We wanted to know the same thing. That's the paperwork we're given. Mark Downing is the owner of Downing Funeral Home, where Todd Smith signed off on Robert's cremation. He should have said there's a son and daughter. And we would do things from Facebook to search online, whatever we need to do if we know those people exist. But Downing says he took Todd at his word. What identification did you get from Todd? The identification came from Todd from the hospice, the, the, the hospitals and everything else, that he was a nephew. Robert died after a short time here at HPH Hospice in Brooksville. A spokesperson agreed to an interview and then later declined, emailing in a statement that the facility follows all federal rules that don't require it to question, quote, properly executed forms. We obtained those forms hospice sent the funeral home. A nurse wrote they called nephew Todd Smith, who is having a locksmith open Robert's locked chest file to find financial records, and states Robert had not been in contact with his children for 20 years. But Michael and his sister say they spoke to their father on the phone from time to time. They also provided emails they traded with him and retirement fund documents Robert signed naming them as beneficiaries. We walked into trash, every, all his financial records poured all over. That was the only thing that was out. Michael says some of his father's belongings were gone. You can see this is the, the combination that they broke. And his guns were missing. He collected antique guns. Um, the last time I saw, he had a, well over 20 valuable guns. Michael and his sister called the cops, but the Citrus County Sheriff's Office never opened an investigation into the missing guns. If we had a list, serial numbers, or anything that would actually said, yes, this object is missing, we could research it. In his report, a deputy says he asked Todd if he had written permission to take anything from the home. Todd told the deputy, no, but the only things he took was a bed, a chair, and a flat screen television. Wouldn't that raise a red flag? So at this point, we weren't able to determine who the property belonged to. So it becomes a civil matter. After hearing about Todd Smith and reading about Todd Smith, we wanted to meet Todd Smith. I want to be able to talk with you to kind of hear your side of things. He agreed. I mean, he was family to us. He really was. He was at our family dinners, his birthday. We celebrated with him, everything. We asked Todd to show us photos and texts or emails backing up his story, but he never provided any. I was the one that was there with him to wipe his butt when he had an accident, when he was sick and couldn't get up out of bed. His kids weren't here for the last six and a half years. And I'm not trying to make them out to be bad people or anything, but it happened. And I'm sorry that it happened this way. I didn't want to have to make these decisions. Todd, tell us, why did you say that you were Robert's nephew? First and foremost, I didn't say that. He is the one who told the nurse at the hospital that I was his nephew. Is there a reason why you didn't correct anyone? I tried to get a hold of his family. His gun collection, other belongings. Where I don't are those know things? Anything about that? Why should people 
trust you. I'm a trusting person. I mean, I did nothing wrong. Todd admits he never picked up Robert's ashes from the funeral home. Michael tracked down his father's remains 10 months later, finally laying him to rest. With military funeral honors. I'm trying to do the right thing and basically just make sure this doesn't happen to other people. Since we started asking questions, Robert's bank has opened a fraud investigation into why someone changed the contact info on his account. And the state agency that oversees funeral homes told us it is now investigating this case. We have resources on our website for how you can file a complaint related to funeral and cemetery services. I'm my team investigator Kylie McGivern taking action for you.